Ladies and gentlemen, the graduation ceremony will begin shortly. Please switch off your hand, handphones or put them on silent mode if you haven't done so. We have arranged for official photographers to take photos of all graduates receiving their diplomas. If you wish to take additional photographs, you may do so after the ceremony at the plaza. I will be inviting you all to stand when the academic procession enters and leaves the convention hall. Graduates, please ensure that you have your admission ticket and identity card with you before joining the queue to receive the scroll box on stage. You will be issued with a card, logon ID and password as you leave the stage. Please keep the card as you will need it to place your order for photos later. Lastly, graduates, graduation is a formal occasion. Please show respect for our guests and fellow graduates in your behavior. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Gentlemen, please be seated.
Our guest of honor, Mr. Teo Chi Hien, Deputy Prime Minister and Coordinating Minister for National Security. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the 58th graduation ceremony of the Singapore Polytechnic is declared open and it will be held over 16 sessions. We welcome you to this first session to witness the presentation of diplomas and other awards to graduates from SP Business School and the School of Electrical and Electronic Engineering. This year's graduation is a very special one for SP as we celebrate the 200,000 graduates SP has produced. May I now invite our Principal and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. So Waiwa, to deliver the opening address. Mr. So, please. Mr. Teo Chihen, Deputy Prime Minister and Coordinating Minister for National Security. Mr. Bill Chang, the Chairman of the Singapore Polytechnic Board of Governors. Mr. Wong Kim Yin, Mr. Ben Amanda Chen, and Dr. Benjamin Ko, members of the Singapore Polytechnic Board of Governors. Distinguished guests, parents, colleagues, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Welcome to our 58th graduation ceremony. It is our pleasure to have DPM Teo as our guest of honour on this momentous occasion. Thank you, Deputy Prime Minister. <clears throat> this year, we see 5,263 students graduating from Singapore's first polytechnic. I congratulate all graduates and in particular, uh, 343 of you here at this session receiving your certificates. Founded in 1954, SP's first graduate received his diploma in 1961 at the graduation ceremony held in Victoria Theatre. Subsequently, we commemorated our 50,000 graduate in 1990, the 100,000 in year 2000, and the 150,000th in 2010. Today, as we celebrate achieving the milestone of graduating our 200,000 graduate, I'm pleased to recognize, I believe he's here, the presence of Mr. Patrick Wang, and he's our 100,000th graduate. Thank you, Patrick for joining us to celebrate achieving this milestone. To the graduates assembled here today, all of you can be proud and honoured to be part of this 200,000 strong network of illustrious men and women who, like you, they had entered the gates of SP and then they've gone on to help build Singapore over the last six decades. An excellent model is our chairman, Mr. Bill Chang, who is here with us today. He was part of the graduating cohort in 1986 from the School of Electrical and Electronic Engineering. He is today the CEO Group Enterprise of Singtel. Not only does he play a major role in the development of Singapore's IT and telecom industry through his position in Singtel, he also co chair the Future Jobs and Skills Subcommittee of the Committee on the Future Economy of Singapore set up by the Singapore Government. In recognition of his contributions to Singapore, he was awarded the Public Service Star in 2017. He itemizes an SP alumnus who is successful and still gives back to SP and Singapore unreservedly. I hope that all the graduates here today will draw inspiration from our chairman and continue the SP tradition of powering Singapore's development and transforming the country towards not just a strong economy, but also a caring society. One particular responsibility you will have as a new generation of Singapore's workforce is to renew Singapore. As the Prime Minister himself said yesterday, at the May Day Rally, you are expected to open a new chapter, 
create new possibilities and frontiers for our country. That is why for our 200,000 graduates, we have chosen Mr. Lee Zhengde, a student from our Diploma in Engineering with Business. While he is still a student here in SP, he is already CEO and co-founder of a company providing solutions to travellers. Just earlier this morning, I was present to witness the signing of an MOU between his company and an Indonesian investor. He is a good example for all of us and for you, the new generation, to create new possibilities and frontiers. To help you carry the SP alumni mentor to renew the country and thrive in this era of constant technological innovation, SP has transformed ourselves to become a polytechnic, not just for teenagers, but a polytechnic for all ages. We have committed ourselves to be your lifelong partner beyond your graduation. Through our continued education programs, we will help you upgrade and further develop your skills at different stages in your lives. These programs cover not just your areas of specialization, but also generic ones such as entrepreneurship. So your graduation, your graduation today is but the beginning of a long-term relationship with SP. So graduates, as I once again extend my congratulations, I say to you, not just goodbye, but also see you again on campus. Thank you, Mr. So. It is now my pleasure to invite our guest of honor, Mr. Teo Chi Hien, Deputy Prime Minister and Coordinating Minister for National Security to deliver the graduation address. Ms. DPM Teo, please. Mr. So Wai Wa, Principal and CEO of Singapore Polytechnic, members of the Singapore Polytechnic Board of Governors, distinguished guests, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning and thank you to Singapore Polytechnic for inviting me to join you on this special occasion. Today marks a significant milestone for the 343 graduates from the School of Business and the School of Electrical and Electronic Engineering as well as the winners of the institutional medals. And my heartiest congratulations to all of you. I would also like to acknowledge those who have supported you in this journey, your faculty members, families, and friends, many of whom are here today. Congratulations as well to Singapore Polytechnic on reaching the milestone this morning of having more than 200,000 graduates. This reflects SP's significant contribution to Singapore's development. SP was set up in 1954 during the post-Second World War period when there was a critical need for technical education to support our early industrialization efforts. It was also the first technical institution in Southeast Asia offering diploma courses from engineering to accountancy. SP also started degree programs in engineering and architecture, which were subsequently transferred in the 1960s to the Singapore University, one of the predecessors of the National University of Singapore. SP has kept abreast of the latest technology and the needs of our economy. Many of our graduates this year have taken courses in completely new areas, areas that did not exist when you were born 20 years ago or even 10 years ago, such as cybersecurity, games design and development, and integrated events and project management. Sometimes when I meet uh, parents of polytechnic students in my constituency, I ask them, so what's your son or your daughter studying? 
and they have a hard time explaining to me what it is because they've never heard of it before. They don't know what it is, but they do know that it is something which is relevant and important for the future, and they are happy about that, that their sons and their daughters are being prepared for the future. Even in courses such as electrical engineering, mechanical engineering and marine engineering that sound the same as when SP was founded, these courses have continually been reviewed and had their content totally revamped to ensure that they are relevant to our economy and prepare our students well for the future. And these efforts include collaborations with industry partners to develop state-of-the-art research and development facilities within campus and internships for students locally and overseas. Indeed, there are now so many more opportunities for our students. Our polytechnic model of education where students graduate with industry-relevant work-ready skills with a solid foundation in the basics for lifelong learning has been well received by students and employers and recognized as filling a key need for many countries. Our polytechnic sector has therefore grown over the years to the five polytechnics that we have today, which graduate more than 24,000 students per year. Actually, of the five polytechnics, I know Singapore Polytechnic the least because it was already established. And I was more involved in the development of the other four polytechnics during my various uh, previous work stints. I sat on the board of one of them. I was responsible for seeing through the development of some and starting the last one, Republic Polytechnic, as well. But Singapore Polytechnic was always a model. What we had, how we had grown, the kinds of courses, the way it was structured, and how the graduates were always able to find their way in the world with relevant work-ready programs and courses. More than 45% of each birth cohort can now benefit from full-time diploma programs in Singapore, compared to only 8% in 1980s. So in the 1980s, only 8% of our students born in each year went to polytechnic. And today, 45% do. And this makes a real difference to our students, to our economy, and to the prospects for both Singaporeans individually as well as Singapore as a country collectively. Currently, almost all our polytechnic students have a period of internship in their programs. And nearly half, about 45% of graduates, have the opportunity to have a stint overseas. The pathways for polytechnic admission have also become more diverse. This is part of the total approach in our education system where there are always ladders and bridges for students to progress in their education and open up new career opportunities. Students who do well at ITE in their NITEC or higher NITEC can progress to do their polytechnic diplomas and about one in four do so today. In 2013, SP took in its first batch of students through the Polytechnic Foundation program. Apart from the O-level route, this offers top-performing secondary four normal academic students the opportunity to pursue polytechnic education. From next year, this program will be expanded to benefit up to 15% of students from the SEC4 NA cohort compared to 12% previously. The Polytechnic Early Admissions Exercise was also introduced in 2016 to broaden selection where up to 15% of each polytechnic intake are chosen based on their course-specific aptitude and interest rather than just their O-level scores. <coughs> Our polytechnics have therefore helped to ensure that we have a healthy pool of highly skilled professional men and women for our workforce. Many graduates have become industry captains, scientists, professionals, entrepreneurs and architects, and each one 
has made a difference to Singapore. And several alumni are now serving on your board of governors, and they are good role models for our students. Our operating environment for you as students and graduates, for everyone in our workforce and for our country, is increasingly volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Rapid technological breakthroughs are fundamentally changing the nature of globalization and our economy, the work that we do, and the skills that are required. There are two key attributes that our workforce will need. Lifelong learning to develop deep skills and an entrepreneurial mindset that can help you thrive in a competitive global business environment. And let me explain why. When I was born in 1954, same year as Singapore Polytechnic, the life expectancy of a Singaporean was somewhere around 60 plus years old. So several of us have already got extra bonus years in our lives. But if you're only going to live to 60 plus and you're going to work to 50, 55, then you can look upon education as an exercise which takes place in the early phase of your life then you have a second phase of your life where you work, and then you retire, and then you do your final graduation. But when Singaporeans today are living into their mid-80s and remain in good health, both intellectually, mentally, and physically, well into their 60s and 70s, we're talking about a much, much longer opportunity for staying active in the economy, in work, and socially. And many Singaporeans want to continue working. So is it possible that everything that you need to know in your work life, and even in your daily life, you only learn in the first 20 years of your life, and then you hope that it will last you for the next 60 plus years of your life? It's not possible. We live longer, technology progresses further, and the old concept of lifetime employment, where you go into a company and work there for life, and perhaps, as in Japan, your father and grandfather worked in the same company, is no longer so relevant today. Because you are more likely to live longer than the company, rather than the company to live longer than you. Because companies restructure they merge, they have technology which may go out of date, they may have to shift business lines, geographies in which they operate. So we all have to keep on learning. And that's why lifelong learning is so important for all of us. It's the next frontier in education. We have successfully conquered the frontiers of mass primary education, mass secondary education, mass tertiary education for all our students. The next frontier for every country in the world is to find the right model for mass continuing education, lifelong learning. And no country has successfully done that today and found a good model. We are well on our way. The second issue is entrepreneurial skills. Why are they important? I talked earlier about ladders and bridges that if you have, we have an education system that provides you ladders and bridges for many opportunities to progress in our educational institutions. But if you depend only on ladders and bridges, and more so if you depend only on escalators to get you up to the next level, then by definition, you can only go to where many other people have gone before. Who have people who have constructed those ladders and bridges and people who have constructed those escalators. But if you want to go beyond, to go further, to go to areas which are unexplored, then you need to climb. You need to learn how to climb. You need how to establish and cut your own path as you move forward. And you need to learn to take risks and to be prepared to learn both from success and failure. And that's true for each of us as individuals and for us as a country. We have to retain our entrepreneurial spirit and to be able 
to go where we have not gone before and to try to learn to accept that sometimes what we try may not succeed, but not to be too critical of ourselves or of others if we don't, but to learn from it and to keep on progressing. So these are the two key attributes that Singapore and our workforce will need for the future. And Singapore Polytechnic has been preparing you well for these. First, lifelong learning opens up more opportunities for our students as they develop deep skills to stay relevant and productive. And we have made significant investments in every Singaporean and empowered everyone to take charge of our own lifelong learning journey. At the national level, with Skills Future, Singaporeans have opportunities to develop their potential throughout life, regardless of their starting points, regardless of their age. More than 23,000 individuals took up lifelong learning programs at our polytechnics last year. This number is large, but it's not large enough and needs to go up further. We will continue to strengthen partnerships to develop continuing education and training courses that meet industry needs. For instance, our universities, polytechnics and Institute of Technical Education have teamed up to develop the Skills Future series of courses to equip working adults with deep skills in eight priority and emerging areas such as data analytics, digital media, urban solutions and advanced manufacturing. So this is not just for students, but for working adults too. So this is addressed not just to those graduating today, but also to their parents who are here today. We all have to be students for life. At the institutional level, our tertiary institutions will continue to support you in your lifelong learning journey by providing industry-relevant opportunities to upskill and reskill. Singapore Polytechnic alone has over 300 continuing education and training CET courses to choose from. Courses will be more modular to help our workforce keep up with the rapidly changing operating environment and enable more Singaporeans to achieve their career aspirations. Singapore Polytechnic is also coordinating training efforts for the architecture, building and construction, energy and chemicals, food manufacturing, human resource, and maritime sectors. This will help students, not just from Singapore Polytechnic, but also those in other institutions. Students can look forward to more industry-relevant curricula, as well as more experiential learning opportunities, such as through the Skills Future Earn and Learn programs. Second, as I said, our workforce and startups have to be more entrepreneurial and can seize the opportunities in our growth markets in ASEAN, where there are 600 million people, in India and China, where there are more than a billion people each. Our entrepreneurs can work with global businesses to raise technology and innovation levels. Our polytechnics have been active in recent years to foster an entrepreneurial spirit, mentoring and guiding students keen to start their own ventures. I'm happy that Singapore Polytechnic has recently set up an entrepreneurship center known as Spin-Off, where students can solve real-world problems under the mentorship of industry experts. Three financial technology companies have co-located on SP's campus, where they will mentor student startups, provide internships to students, and co-develop entrepreneurship-related curriculum. Such electives and courses will allow full-time students to learn together with adult learners and provide opportunities to exchange ideas and to grow more startups. And even if you're not working in a startup, how do you create value for your company? You don't create value simply by doing what was being done before. In a company, you have the opportunity to create value by creating new products, opening new markets, finding new opportunities, which the company or existing employees may not have seen before. And that's how you can help create value in the companies that you work for, not necessarily in your own startup. SB's 200,000th graduate, Li Zengte, is 
one of such entrepreneurs with a global outlook. He first enrolled in Singapore Polytechnic's foundation program and then its diploma in engineering with business. Zheng Te and his brother, Zheng Tao, who also graduated from SB, have set up an online travel planner, Packdad.com, to help group travellers. They persevered, although several of their initial ventures were less than successful. Today, Packdad.com has helped to bring together over 10,000 itineraries for 16 countries across Asia. Many graduates and recipients of the institutional medals are also developing startups in social services, food manufacturing, renewables, and electronics. And I wish all our young entrepreneurs success as you pursue your passion. Learn from both your failures and your successes and take yourself on to eventual success. With an entrepreneurial mindset, you can take on life's challenges, thrive in a volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous world and contribute to Singapore and to society. While you have acquired useful skills at Singapore Polytechnic, I would encourage all of you to embrace lifelong learning and take advantage of the continuing education courses by SB and other institutions. Make use of the ladders and the bridges that you have, but remember that if you want to climb further and climb beyond, you have to cut your own path, to find your own way forward. And that also is a useful skill that you're learning in Singapore Polytechnic and our other educational institutions. And once again, congratulations to all of you on your graduation and to Singapore Polytechnic on reaching the milestone of producing 200,000 graduates. I wish all of you every success in your endeavours. Thank you very much. Thank you, DPM Tio. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the presentation of diplomas to the graduates. At this session, the highest awards of the Polytechnic will also be presented. This morning, we will be presenting diplomas and other awards to 267 graduates from SP Business School and 76 graduates from the School of Electrical and Electronic Engineering. May I now call upon the director of SP Business School, Ms. Tan Yen Yen, to present the diplomas. Ms. Tan, please. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduates for the Diploma in Accountancy. Aaron Ang Guo Jin. <laughs> Chan Ying Ying. <laughs> Daphne Ng Yun Ying. Irene Kang An Chi <laughs> Leong Yong Jian <laughs> Ng Pei Tin <laughs> Tan Che En Tan Shi Jie Tan Yi Ling Abdul Hafiz bin Abdul Ghani Amelia Xiao Wei Xuan Ang Hui Ling Ang 
Ang Kai Ling Janelle. Ang Yi Fong Josephine. Ang Yi Xuan Serene. Angeline Fong Jing Wei. Aisha Siddika A. Sultan Naziri. Benjamin Ko Wei En. Brian Fung Yu Jit. Brian Tio Yu Wun. Chan Hui Wen Mandy. Chan Jing Ying. Chan Yong Jie Claude. Chia Shi Ying. Chia Yan Chi. Chen Ming Yi Cheng Xin Yi Chiu Jia Xin Chiu Yi Tat Chong Hui Sin Chong Ji Yang Chao Shou Kai Chua Jia Yin Chua Wei Yang Chua Yu Kim Daniel Yong Jie Shen Daniel Alessandra Durga Sri Gunalan Elizabeth Isabel Chia Sin Ping Eng Li Hung Emery Eng Ya Shi Eugene Chan Jin Hong Eunice Lim Kit Min Fu Rui En Kelly Fragata Dior Rivier May Carino Gan Jin Kai Gan Le Xuan Gan Su An Jerry Lo Kiet Li Go Jia Hui Guan Xiao Yan Ho Wei Chi Vicky
Jemain Lim Ming Min. Jamie Lee Ji Ning Jamie Liu Jing Wen Janessa Tan Sin Yu Jocelyn Ng Hui Yi K Sonia Kiano Chan Yu Kin Kek Ling Ling Kelvin To Zi Yuan Kan Jin Hui Terence Kin Tian Hui Ko Jing Kai Fabian Kong Clement Kwong Cho Ying Law Hui En Li Chi Yong Liu Yen Ling Lie Ke Hui Lim Jin Yik Ryan Lim Jing Zhi Travis Lim Jin Yi Darren Lim Li Jin Lim Liang En Lim Yu Ting Lin Jia Xin Lin Jing Yi Lin Tao Grazia Vienna Isabel Datu Liao Fang Yi Lo Wai Kin Edgar Lo Si Ying Cheryl Lo Wei Liang Marcus Lai Wang Kiong Mark Yi Ting Nicole Marilyn Yuki Lee and Girl Matilda Huang Wei Moi Jie En Justin Muhammad Daniel bin Othman Muhammad Danish bin Muhammad Ali Muhammad Farhan bin Abdul Salim Muhammad Irfan Faizul Rahman Nabila binti Azhar Natalie Tan Natalie Fu Ying Ying 
Nathaniel Teo Jin Ren. Niu Le Chi. Ng Hui Min. Ng Kai Jin Edmund. Ng Pei Yi Michelle. Ng Pin Da Darren. Ng Ji En. Ng Xian Huang. Ng Yan Wei. Ng Yun Qian. Nikki Tan Si Ling. Nur Ariani Binte Hamidon. Nur Faiza Binte Elias. Nur Inshira Mohammed Iqbal. Nur Hidayu Binte Othman. Nurul Farhana Binte Mohammed Daniel. O Feng Juan Pamela. Pang Siu Wen. Pei Ke Hui. Po Ding Jie James. Po Simin. Pon Jia Min. Rachel Tan Wei Xuan. Rifat Razana Jawahar Hussein. Riyad Hakim bin Lukman. Sabrina Fu Wen Hui. Samuel Ang Sin Wei. Sanjana Rajendra Nair. Xia Yu Xuan. Shan Mugaratinam Kula Sagaran. Sharada Kuna Siakar. Charlene Pang. Sean Kok Jin Yuan. Sherman Tan Xuan Ming. Cheryl Ann Xia Ching Hui. Sim Yi Ling. Siti Nur Shafika Binte Ghazali. Swen Wei En. Suhasini Pile Siva Shankar. T. Prabhu. Tan Chi Lang Kojiro. Tan Chin Lin. Tan Hui Ting. Tan 
Tan Jin Yi. Tan Jin Ying. Tan Shi Ding Estella. Tan Shi Ti Shalise. Tan Xian Ying. Tan Zhi Lin. Ti Jin Hao. Teng Hui Min Melinda. Tio Xin Yi. Tio Xue Qi. Tio Yik Liang Leonard. Tom Wyman Sherilyn. Taslina Begum Maidin Abdul Kader. Tong K. Young Brenda. Ulfa Ifa Binte Ashik. Belmonte Nina Jolene Elizabeth Duban. Veronica Po Yu Lin. Wang Xiao Wei. Wang Wei Hing. Wu Jia Rui. Xiang Sha Sha. Yap Shi Yun Kevin. Yap Yen Ping. Yao Ruo Sing. Yo Jin Hui. Yao Yong Chang Yao Yun Rong Yvonne Tan Hui Jian Zilia Ng Jing Ling Zhan Jin Ladies and gentlemen, the graduates for the Diploma in Human Resource Management with Psychology. Kati Ko Bao Bing Nai Jing Wen Vanessa We see Wen Deslin. Abikesh Pandey. Aloysius Go King Fong. Ariel Te Yi Wei. Bernice Tan Jia Ling. Celine Sung Sin Yi. Chan Jia Sin. Chan Sin Ying. Chanel Yun Ke Eng. 
Chen Wei Yi. Chiang Man Fai Brandon. Siobhan Tan Jia Yi. Chiang Ya Yuan Madeline. Chong Xin Yi. Chun Jing Ying. Damien Wong Wai Lun. Dong Shi Hua. Eileen Tae Yi Ling. Eileen Wong Se Ching. Erica Kuo Yi Xian. Fong Xue Ying Rachel. Hilda Ioana Yap Si Min. Joel Lo Ai Hui. Jusandra Go Ju Xian. Juslinda Ko Chen Jit Singh. Karina Chandan Matani. Ku Nuramalina Binti Ku Azaman. Li Chuan Singh. Li Ren Hui Daniel. Li Yun Lin. Lim Jin Heng Daryl. Lim Mei Hui. Lim Rui Yi. Lo She Ying. Muhammad Ili bin Suhaimi. Nashita Yusra bin Te Yazid. Ng Hui Yi. Ng Hui Chi. Ng Kai Lin Rachel. Ng Pin Jie. Ng Shirley Lin. Noah Ju Se En. Nur Zaida. Nur Farah binti Pauzi. Nurlin Naziha binti Abdul Majid. O Si Ting. Pong Chi Seng Andrew. Poon Ying Ying. Xia Tiu Wen Alexius. So Yi En. Su Pang Tun. Shafika Binti Yusman. Tan Li Yen Venice.
Tan Si Jing Kimberly. Ti Hui Xuan. To Shi Min. Wing Ki Piu Tan. Wong Min Rachel. Xie Xiao Qi. Yap Li Ting. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the list of graduates from SP Business School. Thank you, Ms. Tan. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now present diplomas to the graduates from the School of Electrical and Electronic Engineering. May I call upon Mr. To Se Kun, Acting Director of the School of Triple E, to present the diplomas. Mr. To, please. The graduates for the Diploma in Engineering with Business. Jonah Thumb Winlong. <laughs> Lee Han Yong Andy. <laughs> Lim Yok Tiong. <laughs> Lok Kai Fong. Arpa Pipat Pong Visan Benedict Ko Wee Singh Brandon Ng Zhe Hao Brian Yi Shao Bin Chai Sui Jing Cindy Chu Po Shi Chu Yuan Xiang Chia Li Shan Chia Ting Hong Chong Yu Min Chua Chen Yi Emily Tan Siok Hui Farah Amira Binte Muhammad Faisal Fatima Nasiha Binte Nagar Miran Feng Yu Xin Han Jian Xiu Hans Heng Mok Wei Heng Kai Xin Jonah Ng Rei Chi Jorina Chong Yu Ling Junian To Liao Kai Li Lim Wei Heng Aaron Lim Yu Zhi Andre Mageshwaran Muthusami
Muhammad Amin bin Zaini. Muhammad Hakim bin Syairi. Muhammad Khairuddin bin Johar. Muhammad Nurul Haq bin Rashid. Nicholas Lau Kuan Liang. Nigelus Lim Jin Hui. Wei Xin Yao. Priya Latha M Shamugam. Sherry Lim Yun. Sim Ying Ying. Siti Aziana Binte Ahmad. Syed Ahmad Taha Bin Yusuf. Tan Fu Wei Ryan. Tang Chi Wei. Ting Pang Sheng. Te Wei Jie. To Bun Kiet Gerald. To Xuan Wei Kenneth. Thresten Kwa Wei Kian. Vernon Kwa Jin Tung. Vijita Eligerson. Vinod Raja Manakam. Wang Tian Yu. Wang Xue. Wee Chang Han. Wong Jin Wei Ernest. Woon Yi Jin. Yap Jan Wei. Zhuo Jia. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the list of graduates from the School of Electrical and Electronic Engineering. Thank you, Mr. To. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will now present the prizes to our graduates for their excellent academic performance. May I invite Mr. Bill Chang, Chairman of Singapore Polytechnic's Board of Governors, to present the following prizes. Mr. Chang, please. From the Diploma in Accountancy course, the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants Singapore Prize goes to Chen Dao Yi. <laughs> the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants Singapore Prize goes to Li Ying. The CPA Australia Prize goes to Lim Jin Heng. Hey! 
The Deloitte Prize goes to Lim Yi Tian. The KPMG Prize goes to Ng Wei Jie. The Ernst & Young Prize goes to Ong Jiahui. The Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales Prize goes to Sai Min En. From the Diploma in Human Resource Management with Psychology course, receiving the Kelly Services Prizes are Elvin Ong Wei Xiang. And Amelia Aston Lim Yen Fang. From the Diploma in Engineering with Business course, the Siemens Prize goes to Conrad Rain Tang Zhe Ao. The United BMEC Prize goes to Monica Tricia Medalo Kalinao. That concludes the presentation of prizes. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now present course medals to our top graduates for their outstanding all-round performance. From the Diploma in Accountancy course, the Inland Revenue Authority of Singapore Silver Medal is awarded to Natalie Tan Yingjin. From the Diploma in Human Resource Management with Psychology course, the Prima Silver Medal is awarded to Dean Lok Jia Hao. The Tafep Gold Medal is awarded to Kimli Tan Mui Kwan. From the Diploma in Engineering with Business course, the Semcorp Marine Silver Medal is awarded to Brendan Lau Cheng Yang. <laughs> the Exxon Mobil Gold Medal is awarded to Lim Fang Yi. That concludes the presentation of course medals. Thank you, Mr. Chang. Ladies and gentlemen, before we present the highest institutional awards of the Singapore Polytechnic, we will watch a short video presentation on our eight top graduates. Over the years, Singapore Polytechnic has honoured many outstanding graduates who have not only excelled academically, but also effected positive social impact. This year, we celebrate the achievements of the following eight graduates. During her secondary school days, Chu Kang Lin failed English and had difficulty grasping theoretical concepts. But this Fuhua Secondary School alumna realized she had one subject in her favor, design and technology. So she took up mechanical engineering at ITE before enrolling into a diploma in the same field at SP. At the Polytechnic, Kang Lin seized every opportunity to excel. 
She developed software to automate the process for machine calibrations during her internship at ST Kinetics. She studied numerous automation systems during a six-week overseas exchange program in Changchun, China. This Tae Eng Soon gold medalist will be pursuing a degree in mechanical engineering at NTU. She aspires to work as an engineer before becoming a lecturer to inspire and nurture a new generation. As a child, Erica Tan Si Wen was fed a steady diet of animated films. So when it came time to pick a course of study, SP's Diploma in Digital Animation was the obvious choice for this Tanjong Katong Girls School alumna. At SP, Erica learned everything she could about video and animation. And during her internship at production company Big 3 Media, she seized every opportunity to excel. Her list of achievements include a National Day 2017 video segment and the opening sequence for Mediacorp's Toggle Online web series Dear DJ. Erica's work so impressed the production house that they offered her a full-time contract. And so this Tan Kei Yong gold medalist will embark on a stint in the media industry, building up a portfolio before pursuing her passion to read animation and directing at an overseas university. Lin Jingying has always been passionate about cosmetics. So this Haogang Secondary School alumna enrolled into SP's Diploma in Perfumery and Cosmetic Science through the Polytechnic Foundation program to gain insight into the industry. A high point in her academic journey was her internship at the Applied Research Department of Simrai, Singapore, where she did research on fragrance encapsulation technology and conducted test evaluations. This SP scholar also developed her other passion, helping others. While in China for a community service project, she worked with children with special needs. In Singapore, this Model Student Award winner made weekly visits to the St. John's Home for the Elderly to engage its residents. This Chua Chua Tech gold medalist will be studying chemistry and biological chemistry at NTU to fulfill her dream of creating skincare products that will make a difference. Tan Yu Yang came from a low-income, single-parent family. While studying, he worked part-time to lighten his mother's financial load. His studies suffered. He scored badly for every subject, except mathematics. He knew then his future lay in numbers. So when he excelled in his N-levels, this Manjusri Secondary School alumni enrolled in SP's Diploma in Accountancy through its Polytechnic Foundation program. Through SP, he went for a study trip to China, chaired a committee on human trafficking at a youth ASEAN conference and took part in several competitions. His internship work earned him the PricewaterhouseCoopers Outstanding Award for Whole Leadership. This SP scholar also served the community. In Indonesia, he worked to improve the livelihood of mushroom farmers. In Singapore, he raised funds to refurbish the library of a family service centre. This Lo Guan On Gold medalist plans to attain his Chartered Accountant qualifications and contribute to the financial landscape of Singapore. Kirsten Yip Su Jun lives to write, which is why SP's Diploma in Creative Writing for TV and New Media was the obvious choice for the CHIJ Topayo alumna. This Model Student Award recipient engaged in several prominent activities. Under the Genesis 2016 Picture Book Program, she wrote a children's storybook, which was displayed at Singapore's National Library. She also took on the role of Secretary General for the S. Rajaratnam Endowment Youth Model ASEAN Conference and even facilitated a high-profile forum. She also served as editorial intern at The Straits Times. But it was her experience teaching English while at an overseas community involvement program in Indonesia that really made an impact. So looking ahead, this To Chin Chai gold medalist plans to intern at various social enterprises and media-related companies and raise awareness of special needs before furthering her studies. During his secondary school years, Muhammad Kairul was not interested in studies and often skipped classes to hang out with friends. 
The turning point for this Bowen Secondary School alumni came when his father was involved in a work accident. He realized that he too needed to shoulder some family responsibility. So Cairo gave his all to his studies and earned himself a place in SP Singapore Maritime Academy to pursue marine engineering. During his three years at SP, Cairo interned at Bourbon Offshore Asia. While working on board ship, he not only investigated vessel breakdowns and studied machinery repairs, but also took on additional duties in auditing and insurance. The managing director was so impressed with Cairo that he offered him a full-time position with the company. Before that can happen, this Lee Kuan Yew award winner will pursue a degree in maritime studies at the Nanyang Technological University. At 33 years of age, Dominic Lee Guoming has had a wider range of experiences than his polytechnic peers. By the time he entered SP, the Boon Lay Secondary School alumni had already completed his national service and served eight years in the Singapore Armed Forces or SAF. In fact, it was the SAF that offered him a scholarship to take up SP's Diploma in Energy Systems and Management. For this model student, learning went beyond the classroom. He honed his music and leadership skills in SP Symphonic Band. He sharpened his engineering know-how by engaging with students from other engineering fields to build a solar car. The vehicle raced 3,000 kilometers from Darwin to Adelaide in Australia, with Dominic troubleshooting and maintaining the vehicle's batteries throughout the race. His education fired his passion in alternate energy systems. Moving forward, this Lee Kuan Yew award winner hopes to do research to minimize mankind's carbon footprint. He has always been fascinated with electronics. So when Lee Wen Wei completed his O-levels, SP's Diploma in Electrical and Electronic Engineering course was the obvious choice. At SP, the talent of this former Newtown Secondary School student flourished. During his internship, he improved the data management applications and processes at LTA and assisted with train tests for the new downtown line. He also represented Singapore at the International Standards Olympiad competition in South Korea. Through the National Youth Achievement Award Ambassadors Club, he started an initiative to refurbish old computers for needy families. He also did community service in Yunnan, China, where he and his team built an incinerator for local villages. This Lee Kuan Yew Award winner will pursue a degree in electrical and electronic engineering at the Nanyang Technological University. These top graduates have done Singapore Polytechnic proud. Their stories will serve to inspire others to live their dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now present the highest institutional awards of the Singapore Polytechnic. These awards, the Tae Eng Soon Gold Medal, the Tan Kei Yong Gold Medal, the Chua Cho Tech Gold Medal, the Lo Guan On Gold Medal, the To Chin Chai Gold Medal, and the Lee Kuan Yew Awards will be presented to eight of the Polytechnic's top graduates in recognition of their exceptional all-round performance throughout their course. We are privileged today to have Mr. Teo Chi Hien, Deputy Prime Minister and Coordinating Minister for National Security, to present the Institute's gold medals and top awards. It gives me great pleasure to invite our guest of honor, DPM Teo, to present the Polytechnic's gold medals and top awards. DPM Teo, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's recipient of the Tae Eng Soon Gold Medal is an outstanding graduate from the Diploma in Mechanical Engineering course. The ST Kinetics Silver Medal is also awarded to Chiu Kang Lin. The recipient of the Tan Kei Yong Gold Medal is a graduate from the Diploma in Digital Animation course. The IMDA Gold Medal is also awarded to Erica Tan Siwen. <clears throat> the
The recipient of the Chua Chautek Gold Medal is a graduate from the Diploma in Perfumery and Cosmetic Science course. The Lubrizol Southeast Asia Gold Medal is also awarded to Lim Jingying. This year's recipient of the Lo Guan On Gold Medal is from the Diploma in Accountancy course. The Institute of Singapore Chartered Accountants Gold Medal and the Alfred Robert Edis Prize are also awarded to Tan Yu Yang. The To Chin Chai Gold Medal recipient this year is from the Diploma in Creative Writing for Television and New Media course. The Singapore Press Holdings Gold Medal is also awarded to Kirsten Yip Sujin. There are three Lee Kuan Yew Awards presented this year. The first recipient is a graduate from the Diploma in Marine Engineering course, the SEMCORP Marine Gold Medal, the OCBC Prize, and the Mass Tankers Singapore's Prize are also awarded to Muhammad Khairul Afik bin Jumaat. The second Lee Kuan Yew Award recipient is a graduate from the Diploma in Energy Systems and Management course, the SP Group Gold Medal, the OCBC Prize, and the Institution of Engineers Gold Medal Award are also awarded to Dominic Lee Guoming. The final recipient of the Lee Kuan Yew Award is a graduate from the Diploma in Electrical and Electronic Engineering course, the Energy Market Authority Gold Medal, the Diploma Plus Book Prize, the OCBC Prize, and the Institution of Engineers Gold Medal Award are awarded to Lee Wen Wei. That concludes the presentation of the highest awards of the Singapore Polytechnic. Ladies and gentlemen, may I now invite Chairman of our Board of Governors, Mr. Bill Chang, and our PCEO, Mr. So Wai Wa, to join DPM on stage. We will now present our 200,000th graduate of the Singapore Polytechnic. Our 200,000th graduate is Lee Zheng De, a graduate of the Diploma Course in Engineering with Business. Zheng De, please. Thank you, DPM Tio, Mr. Chang, and Mr. So. Ladies and gentlemen, giving the valedictory speech this morning is Lee Zheng De, a graduate of the Dipl Diploma Course in Engineering with Business. May I now call upon Zheng De to deliver the farewell address on behalf of the new graduates. Zheng De, please. A very good morning to our guest speaker, Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Tio Chi Hien, Principal and CEO, Mrs. So Wai Wa, proud parents, and above all, fellow graduates. I would like to start off this speech with a quote from a man that never quite fit in, and a man who saw this world differently. My personal inspiration 
the late Steve Jobs. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Just like any great Hollywood movie, the story always comes first. And this story began with a dream. Like many of you, I came into SP with a fire inside me, believing I could change the world with bold, crazy, magnificent ideas. After all, this is a place where we were promised that is so possible. SP was like our launch pad. Here, we were given learning opportunities to broaden our horizons and minds. My internship experience at a local startup gave me a chance to have a taste of growing up. There, I had the opportunity to voice my thoughts and to take creative ownership in the company's direction. I remember staying back late night with my team to brainstorm on marketing the company's launch event. This experience has built me to be a more confident and resourceful person, which would later turn out to be invaluable when I started my first company with my brother, Zef. Following our curiosity and intuition, as a team, we created PackDad. Thank you. The idea was to make life easier for travelers to plan an itinerary to anywhere in the world. But throughout the process, we were faced with many rejections and failures. We were starting to lose both time and money. And when things aren't working out, you could choose to do one of two things. You could raise the white flag, or you can press on, stay hungry, and stay foolish. We chose the latter. Today, I'm proud to announce that we have now secured an investment from Passport, an Indonesian travel company, and there are now plans to scale the platform across the Southeast Asia region. Thank you. Now, now you see, I've come to realize that SP is so much more than just a place. SP is home to future leaders and change makers a fertile ground for learning and rousing our curiosity. Today, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude on behalf of all graduates. We owe today to the camaraderie among one another, the support of our families, the dedication of our lecturers and SP so that we could pursue our wildest dreams. <laughs> our classmates our classmates and lecturers have pushed us to fulfill our potential over these three years. And for this, we are grateful. Class of 2018, today, as we graduate and move on chasing our ideals with eagerness, we will face countless of rejections and failures. But I hope that you never stop being curious. And as what Steve Jobs might have said, I wish you the same. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Congratulations to the class of 2018, and thank you very much. Thank you, Jinta. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduation ceremony is now adjourned. May I invite all to stand as the procession groups and guests leave the convention hall.
thank you for your patience. Please join us for the tea reception at the plaza outside the convention center. May I invite parents and guests to leave the convention center first. Please ensure that you have all your belongings. Have a pleasant day.